Okay, great. So thank you. Um, I'm going to tell you today about using Wikidata as sort of a community-maintained knowledge base. So this story really starts uh, back in 2008. Uh, we had uh, initiated this project, which we called the Gene Wiki Project, the goal of which was to create a crowdsourced review article for every human gene. And we did that in the context of Wikipedia. We created about 10,000 different gene-specific uh, uh, articles in Wikipedia. And the basic format of the Wikipedia article looked like this. On the right-hand side were uh, data imported from structured databases. And the hope is that the left-hand side would be uh, filled in by the community at large, by domain experts, uh, and it would contain summarized knowledge of, uh, of that gene's function. Um, so this project, I think, uh, was reasonably successful. Uh, now those 10,000 articles collectively get about 5 million page views a month, gets edited uh, 1,000 uh, or more times a month, and uh, it tends to be a valuable resource. Uh, one of the pages, I'll just show up one of the pages uh, in the GeneWiki collection, and this is for a gene and a protein called Reland, and it goes on for about 6,000 words. Um, and it contains nuggets like this, where it says the expression of the Reland protein has been found to be significantly lower in schizophrenia and psychotic bipolar disorder. And that's a really valuable statement, right? It relates that protein to some sort of clinical uh, significance. Uh, that's great for humans to read, but unfortunately it's not great for computers to read or access. For example, there's no way for me to query all of Wikipedia for all the proteins that are significantly down-regulated re in schizophrenia, right? So this is the disadvantage of free text versus a database. And so what we clearly need is a database. So about five years ago, uh, the German Wikipedia uh, actually came out with an initiative called Wikidata. And uh, very simply, Wikipedia is to text what Wikidata is to data. And Denny Ventricek, who was the, um, the initiator of um, uh, the Wikidata project summarized as providing a database of the world's knowledge that anyone can edit. Uh, same principles of crowdsourcing uh, in Wikipedia, but for data. And our transition from the GeneWiki project was really to then uh, make Wikidata into a biomedical database and a biomedical resource we could all build upon. So let's revisit uh, the page for that protein relin. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, of course, that's pretty small in the back of the room, so let me just uh, summarize it like this. Um, everything on this page boils down to a triple, where uh, the subject is Relin, and um, uh, here are the predicates, and here are the objects. So Relin is a subclass of a protein. Relin physically interacts with these two other proteins. Relin regulates neural development, and Relin, as noted on the uh, Wikipedia page, has decreased expression in these two diseases. Of course, these triples aren't just expressed as free text. Um, they actually are related back to stable identifiers. Uh, these QIDs are Wikidata IDs. And all of these can then be, through similar statements, related to uh, the identifiers that uh, we all know and love from uh, NCBI, Ensemble, Uniprot, um, MGI, so on and so forth. So. Um, this is what you get on the Relin page if you go to that URL. But again, if it were just a web page, that wouldn't be terribly uh, interesting. If you instead go to this um, uh, uh, URL, you actually get the JSON representation of that. And you can see essentially all of these things are represented in a structured format that's very, very friendly for computers to uh, assemble and digest. Uh, there's just one additional feature about the Wikidata data model that uh, I'll mention. So Wikidata at its core, each, each unit is a triple. Um, but in addition, um, there are the addition of qualifiers. Each statement can have the addition of qualifiers, which uh, describes different contexts in which uh, that triple is valid, uh, cell types or uh, biological conditions, things like that. Uh, in this case, it's, uh, the qualifier is highlighting how a particular annotation was determined. Um, and it also has directly baked into it a link out to the reference, which obviously is very important for scientific applications. So this is the basic idea of what uh, Wikidata uh, is. 
And um, this is an, a high-level, class-level overview of what we, uh, what our group, the GeneWiki Initiative, has loaded into Wikidata. And uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Um, you know, if we, if we start in the middle here, uh, we, we did start out of the gene wiki. So the gene is the core uh, unit, the core class that we operate on. You can see all the properties, uh, you know, HGNC gene symbol, uh, OMIM IDs, entree gene IDs, so on and so forth. And we have about 505,000 of gene objects uh, in Wikidata that we, you know, quote unquote, maintain. Uh, these are not just human genes, but uh, rat, mouse, yeast, worm, and about 120 uh, microbial species. Uh, those genes are, of course, are related to proteins. And those proteins, by importing data from Interpro, can be related to things like uh, active sites and binding sites and structural motifs and things like that. Uh, it's also related to various gene ontology annotations um, through uh, the various uh, annotation initiatives there. Uh, genes can be related to diseases. We've loaded the entire disease ontology into um, Wikidata. And relationships between genes and diseases uh, are provided through GWAS Central. Uh, diseases can also be related to chemical compounds uh, that are used to treat the disease. The data source we use for that is NDFRT, which is uh, created by the, the VA system. A uh, bunch of chemical properties that are imported from pump chem. Uh, these chemical compounds are related to pharmaceutical products through the European Medical Association, the European uh, equivalent of the FDA. Uh, and then uh, these chemical compounds can also be related over to the, prote the proteins that they target or bind to uh, based on the IUFAR uh, Guide to Pharmacology. So um, shown in orange, again, are all the basic entities that, uh, that our initiative touches and maintains. Uh, in total, it's about a, a million uh, Wikidata items. And we uh, also maintain, essentially as best we can, the relationships between those items from various data sources. Uh, the links out to the other initiatives are, are uh, the other colors, are um, entity types that are sort of um, maintained or added by other groups. And, um, but yet, they're all interconnected in this, this nice graph. OK, so, so what can you do with this graph? Um, and, and I thought I'd start with, with, with a simple example, right? Suppose we wanted to retrieve all genes uh, with a, a genetic association with asthma. The way you would retrieve this is actually using a query language called Sparkle. The, uh, the details of Sparkle I won't go into, but it's an SQL-like query language. Um, and uh, again, these PIDs are the predicates from Wikidata. These QIDs represent Wikidata items. This one is for asthma. This one is for gene. And so this query essentially uh, retrieves um, from Wikidata the 39 genes that um, have been associated with with asthma, according to GWAS Central. So this is essentially demonstrates that we can simply retrieve the data that we loaded from uh, other data resources. It's nice because then every data resource we load, we can access using uh, a systematic uh, Sparkle endpoint. So that's pretty nice, right? But suppose we wanted to start actually integrating data from multiple data sources. Suppose we wanted to get uh, genes associated with asthma and where the gene product is localized to the membrane. Okay, so membrane is clearly a cellular component from the Gene Ontology Consortium. To add that particular um, uh, query, you add these three lines of, to your Sparkle query, and then from that, your uh, whatever, 39 genes uh, gets trimmed down to 22 genes. So now we're starting to see integration between the various things that we've loaded into Wikidata. If you wanted to restrict to non-electronic annotations, because for whatever reason you thought that was important, um, that boils down to adding this one particular line to your Sparkle query. And now your 19 goes down to 15 um, uh, genes. And so here you can uh, actually, you know, showing you can actually compute on the provenance. You can actually also compute on the reference data as well. So if you were only interested in uh, findings that had been demonstrated in the last five years, or uh, was only published in a certain journal, or only you know, had a paper with a given co-author. These are all queries that, in theory, you could do based off of the Wikidata data model. Um, now, suppose that for all the genes that uh, you fished out, 
you wanted to know, oh, I'm sorry, you want, suppose we want to generalize from asthma. We don't want to look specifically at asthma. Suppose we want to look at any respiratory disease. And this is where we can leverage uh, what we loaded into the gene ontology structure. And here we're just looking at um, everything that is a descendant of this QID, which is the QID for uh, respiratory disease. Uh, there's a little bit of formatting here that gets you um, this output in the Sparkle query. So you can see that, yes, we retrieve the 15 genes associated with asthma, but we also get five genes associated with COPD, three genes associated with lung cancer, two genes associated with uh, interstitial lung disease, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and finally, um, just, you know, everything I've shown you up here is integration among the data resources that we've loaded. If you now wanted to start bridging into um, areas of the Wikidata graph that we didn't directly load, uh, you can actually do queries into uh, chemical hazards. So uh, if you wanted to, to again, take those, uh, those 31 genes and look which ones have associated chemical hazards that potentially could cause that disease. This is actually data that was loaded by people at the CDC, and in particular their uh, Occupational uh, Safety and Health Organization. Again, adding two lines to the Sparkle query and gets you these four diseases and um, these six chemical hazards. So again, um, you can see, I hope I've convinced you that you can build up some pretty complex queries in, uh, in this case, 17 lines of, uh, of Sparkle uh, query that span data from many different data resources. So what I've covered up to this point, again, is the idea that we have loaded, our team has loaded many different data resources um, into Wikidata, and that is complemented by other community efforts to load data into Wikidata. And this is nice because it is now we have a centralized resource. But if you're a skeptic, you would say, Andrew, that's, that's great, but you haven't fundamentally done anything here that you couldn't have done otherwise, right? I, as an informatics scientist, could independently have integrated all that data, and it could be done. You've made it easier, but you haven't truly enabled anything. And this is where I think Wikidata really shines, right? Wikidata allows us to go after the domain experts whose knowledge is not currently structured. There's no way currently to get that into your integrative query. So Wikidata allows us, in theory, the possibility of harnessing individual contributions of knowledge. So how, do we gonna, how are we going to harness uh, that knowledge from domain experts? As one initiative along this regard, we've created this, um, this portal, which we call Clambase. And it's a uh, research portal for the chlamydia research community. And the basic idea is this. Within Clambase and based on Wikidata, we are integrating a bunch of chlamydia-specific resources, uh, things on uh, genetic mutants, gene expression timings, host pathogen interac interactions, orthologs, and so on and so forth. So this is integration that the chlamydia research community has no easy access to currently. And we think it's going to be a valuable resource for the chlamydia researchers. It's going to be something that those researchers will gain value in going to, right, as a resource. Oh, and by the way, right, there will also be little buttons that allow you to, say, add uh, something you know, right? And so this idea of community contribution, and so people can add that. That isn't the exact interface that we use anymore. But nevertheless, whatever the community adds will then be directly written to Wikidata, right? So this application is completely backed by Wikidata. And so we open up this idea, this model, where in addition to, for informatics scientists to be loading data sets into Wikidata, we are interested in building applications that serve as a uh, interface to domain experts in various different areas where they can directly start adding and contributing to this massive knowledge graph within Wikidata. So that's the overall vision, and we hope that uh, other people in this crowd are, are interested in, in that vision as well. Uh, this, of course, is about open source, so uh, I invite you to look at uh, the code that we have. This is sort of our main coordination repo up here, and it links to many other uh, repos that have relevant data resources. Uh, last thing is to thank all the people involved, uh, including NIH, for support, and uh, many collaborators uh, around the world. Happy to take any questions.